Intercourse has taken place, no doubt about that. Any bruising? None that I can see. Not that that proves anything either way, of course. Cheers. What happens now? Well, we'll need a written record of everything you've told me so far. Again? Look, I'll tell you what. Why don't you take a shower and have a think about it? Yeah, OK. What's taking so long? I mean, she told you what he did to her, didn't she? Yes, Mr Brogan, but we do need a written statement before we can proceed. At the same time, we don't want to cause Mary any further distress if we can help it. You know, when I think about what he did to her... I'm sure it's a distressing time for both of you. I, I can understand you're being upset. No, you can't. You don't know anything about me. You don't know anything about my daughter. I mean, she's just a child, for God's sake. Hey, John. All I can say is she's been well looked after by a specially trained officer. As soon as she's finished, I'll let you know. In the meantime, if there's anything, I can get you a tea or a coffee. We're all right. I'm Detective Inspector Harry Haynes. This is Detective Sergeant Pierce. And you are Sandro Baldoni, yes? No, that's my brother. Can we come in? Hey, what are you doing in my room? I'm Detective Inspector Harry Haynes. This is Detective Sergeant Pierce. Do you mind if we have an early morning chat? È la polizia che vogliono parlarti. Cosa hai fatto? Hey, ma sta cercando. Uh, sta cercando excuse me, can we have uh, English, please? I mean, apart from reading the menu, my Italian is appalling. Now, Mr. Baldoni, where were you last night? Last night, I went to a club for a dance. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And which club was that then? The Cat's Paws. Very nice club. Lots of pretty girls. Hey, what are you looking for? Uh, and did you manage to bring one of those pretty girls back here with you last night? Hey, it's a free country, I think. And was her name Mary Brogan by any chance? Mary, yeah. What do you want to Answer him, Sandro, in English. Mary Brogan reckons you brought her back here last night, all right, and you raped her. What are you talking about? Well, shall I spell it out for you? Mary Brogan alleges that he brought her back here last night and you forced her to have sex with you. Look, okay, morone, imbecile. Eh, ma non è vero, oh! Gav. Oh. You told me to stop this nonsense. My guess is that you don't know the difference between yes and no. So you come down the station with me and I'll give you a free English lesson. How's that? Sarge said he only thinks he's been burgled. Mind you, if he has, we're looking for a bloke in a Spider-Man suit. Hello? Uh, David Anderson. Yep. Speak to Garfield here, Sunhill Police. OK, come up. Right, let me get this straight. There was £100 on the mantelpiece when he went out. And when he came back an hour later, it had gone. And nothing else was taken, no damage was done, and there's no sign of a forced entry. It must sound very odd, I know. Did you know the communal front door was already open when we came in just now? Kids, I'm going to put up a notice one of these days. You don't think someone could have got in and slipped the Yale lock with a credit card or something? Why don't you tell us what you think, Mr Anderson? Let me show you something. See that? It's always open so the cat can get in and out, but only so far. It's got a window lock on it. All the windows have. You're saying somebody could have got in through here? I suppose I am, really, yes. In broad daylight, over the balcony, in the hour that you were out? Well, no. Look. I don't want to cause them any problems or anything, but people next door, woman on her own, two kids. You're saying it was the kids next door? A kid could get in through that gap. I've let them in that way myself when they've locked themselves out. You know how it is. Housing Association flat. You can't pick your neighbours and all that. Hello. What's your name? Beverly. Hello. And what's your name? Jackie. How old are you, Jackie? Ten. Is your mum in? It's all right, there's no need to be frightened. We just wanted to have a little chat. Do you know the man next door? Mr Anderson? 
You see, he's had some money stolen off his mantelpiece. Now, we don't know how it happened, but we think someone might have climbed in through the bedroom window. You wouldn't know anything about that, would you, Jackie? I just spotted it. I wasn't going to keep it. Do you mind if we come in, Jackie? What are you doing? Watch it, Sally. So, has your mum gone down the shops then, Jackie? No, she's at work. And where would that be? She works at the market. Is that far from here? I don't know. Will we get put in jail? I don't think so. What time does your mum normally do home? Depends. She gets more money if she stays longer. Steve. Outside, yeah? So what we're going to do then? Wait with them until their mum gets back, yeah? Sure. We could be hanging about for hours. See how Oscar from 363 is here. What are you doing? Go ahead, Steve. Yeah, Sarge, can you tell Inspector Munro we've got a couple of children at risk here? Will do, Steve. That's a bit over the top, isn't it, Steve? We can't leave them here on their own, can we? Oh, come on, you know the school. It's clean, warm, and they've got food here. Now, the mum probably has to go out to work. There's no point in us adding to her problems, is there? Don't worry about it, love, but don't go now, OK? 363, Oscar 1, receiving. Yep. Go ahead, sir. How old are these children, Steve? They're... Uh, I'm ten and Beverly's seven. Ten and seven. It's two girls. The mother's whereabouts is not known. It looks like she could be out some time. Right. I'm on my way. Sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Brogan. However, I can now assure you everything is in hand. You keep saying that. Look, there must be something we can do. She is our daughter, for heaven's sake. Well, I'll tell you what. Mary's going to need a change of clothes after she's finished. Why don't I get an officer to take you both home and then drop you off to collect her? Oh, why don't we do that, John, yeah? OK, OK. Yes, uh, thanks. Thank you. Tell me, do you think your brother's stupid enough to rape a girl? No. No. But you would say that, wouldn't you? How do you mean? Well, you just said Italian families should stick together. You help each other out. I believe you have only the girl's words so far. Yes. And you came back just after midnight, and you say you didn't hear anything. That's what I said. And you expect me to believe that? Yes. Excuse me, I thought you'd like to know. Mr. Baldoni's briefs arrived. Cheers, Bob. Well, that'll be all. And thank you very much. Listen, Mr. Haynes, I know what you think. But let me tell you something. If it's true that my brother raped this girl, you can lock him up and throw away the key as far as I'm concerned. You understand? Give the man an Oscar. Oh, no! It's clean and warm enough by the looks of it. Yeah, it would have been a lot warmer if the place had gone up in flames. I've checked all the flats in the building. Aside from Mr. Anderson's, they're all out. Right, let's get these two down to the station. Jackie, you're going to have to come with us. But I gave the money back. It's not just the money. You see, your mum's not meant to leave you on your own like this. We're going to have to have a word with her. But until then, it's best if you come down the station. Yeah. What time did you get back from the cat's paws? I don't know, around midnight sometime. Then what happened? Uh, then I put on some music, made some coffee, and then after that, we went to bed. With Mary's consent? Of course. What time did she leave? I don't know. I fell asleep. 
Um, a couple of hours later, I woke up and she was gone. And she left without even leaving a telephone number? Uh, maybe once was enough for her. I don't know. Well, maybe after what happened, she wasn't in the mood for a return visit, eh? But I... OK. Just tell me this. Since this is all a big joke to you, why would Mary Brogan put me and you to all this trouble, hmm? Hey, I don't know. She seemed to be like a very nice girl, like a love and a joke. Maybe she changed her, her mind. Maybe she likes to play games. The woman, Mr. Ains. <laughs> Who knows how the mind works? I don't. Who's going to look after them, sir? Oh, you've done a pretty good job so far, Steve. A bit more babysitting won't do any harm. You can use my office for the time being. Bring out the new man in you, Steve. Hang on. Can you get in there? Yeah. Johnson you crisps? Are you trying to tell me how to bring up my own no, kids? No, Mrs. Johnson. All I'm I trying to do... I don't believe this. What are they doing here? All right, all... Rich. I'm Inspector Monroe. I authorise the removal of your children. We had every reason to suspect they were at risk. They're not exactly babies. And Jackie took some money from your next-door neighbour. What? Now, if you'd like to come this way, Mrs. Johnson. So what were you going to do with the money, anyway? Say you found on the street. Give it to me, ma'am. She's got money problems, has she? Tell him me. Cost an arm and a leg to live in London. What about your dad? Went off with another woman when he came down. A blonde piece. Is he working? Oh, yeah. Works on the buildings. He's always skint, though. Too much of this. Mum? Yeah, when you finish telling everybody all our business. He only told him he's nice. Yeah, right. Come on. I'm afraid we haven't quite finished yet, Mrs. Johnson. The social worker would like a word. Social worker? You're not taking my kids away. They say this ecstasy does wonderful things for the sex life. Is that right, Sandra? Oh, yeah. Makes you feel very nice. Very sexy. And if you were to pop it in someone's, say, coffee, they would become very, how shall I put it, relaxed with the world, wouldn't they? Grandpa put in the coffee. May, you think I will put ecstasy in someone's coffee for a job? Porca miseria. Not just someone, Mary Brogan. And if you got what you wanted, you might just consider that a sound investment. Ma che cosa lui mi sta dicendo che io non capisco un cavolo? Calma, calma. È una cosa molto seria questa. Devi rispondere alle sue domande. Non credo che dovessi fare qualcosa. I'm sorry to interrupt you, gentlemen. If you don't mind, can we please conduct this interview in English, please? Please continue. What Mr. Haynes is saying, Sandro, is that if we can prove you gave Mary Brogan drugs, either with or without her knowledge, the allegation becomes even more serious. Do you understand? Hey, I don't understand anymore. I don't understand why this girl say these things, and I don't understand why you keep me here all day. Hmm? Because, Mr. Baldoni, in this country, rape is a very serious offence. It carries a maximum sentence of life imprisonment. Now, you might think this is just all a big joke, but from where we're sitting, we don't find it funny. Life? I thought you might understand that. You take this girl seriously? You give me one reason why we shouldn't. I want to talk to him. Alone, please. OK, if you think it'll do any good. His interview is suspended at 13.20. I think your officers might have been a bit hasty, Andrew. I don't have the manpower to leave them sitting in the house waiting for Mrs. Johnson to come back from work. Hasn't she heard of child-minded facilities? Where she lives, they're all full. <laughs> so where does that leave us? Well, I'm pretty sure I can find them somewhere in another borough. It's up to her, really. Fine. Mrs. Johnson, you do realise you can't just go out and leave the children on their own like that, don't you? But what do you want me to do? Take them to work with me, selling fruit and veg? Then there's a matter of your daughter having taken money from your next-door neighbour. Well, she didn't learn that from me. I'm not suggesting that she did. However... Listen, there are women round where I live who are quite content to spin out the pittance they get from the social, feeding the kids chip butties morning, noon and night, so they've got a few quid left over for beer and fags. Well, my kids deserve better than that, and they're going to get it. 
I can appreciate that it must be hard for you, Mrs. Johnson. On the other hand, there are laws which my officers are there to uphold. Laws which have your children's interests at heart. You'd think your officers have something better to do. You might be interested to know that they arrived at your flat just in time to prevent a fire. A fire? It's all right, it wasn't serious, but it could have been. Despite what some people think, we're not only in the business of nicking criminals. We don't take some kind of sadistic delight in personally giving you a hard time either. Well, it doesn't look like that from where I'm sitting. Now, I know that the childminding facilities in your area are heavily subscribed. Chuck a block every single one of them. However, Miss Horrocks here knows of a place in the next borough, and I'm sure she'd be more than happy to make the necessary arrangements for you. Look, I don't want social workers interfering in my business. Are you interested or not, Mrs Johnson? Well, yeah, of course I am. Good. Then I'll leave you to it. On the other hand, I must warn you that if this ever happens again, I'll take the matter a good deal further than I have this time. Cheers. Mary? She's got something to tell you. Could we go somewhere private? You better come through here. Come on, sweet. What's this here about you nicking money from next door? Yeah, well, when we get back, you can apologise, Mr. Anderson, for all the trouble you've caused. Do we have to? We'll do as you're told. Well, I don't like you. Anyway, you said you were stuck or pig. Why did you do it? Was it to get back at him for something? No. It just got out of hand, that's all. What did? Right, let's go back to the beginning, from the time you arrived at the club. Well, come on, Mary. I went with my friend Liz. As soon as we got there, she bumped into her ex-boyfriend, Gary. They started having a row, and I went off to the loo and left him to it. When I got back, they'd gone. That's when you met Sandro? Yeah. He asked me for a dance, and we had a couple of drinks. I know what they say about Italians. But it was nice. He made me laugh. Then he said, why didn't we go back to his place? And I said, OK. I had had a couple of drinks. This is all very well, but why did you say Sandro raped you? I fell asleep. It was 5.30 by the time I got home. My dad was waiting in the kitchen like he always does. I thought whatever I tell him this time, I'd better be good. Otherwise, I was really in for it. How do you mean? Oh, he gets a bit carried away, you know, a quick clip round the ear, that sort of thing. Come on, Mum. He knocks her about. He's been doing it for years. God knows what he'd do to me if he really knew what I got up to. All the lies. I've had enough. Does your husband know you're here, Mrs Brogan? He killed both of us if he knew. Ho detto tutta la verità. Loro non sono convinti. Sei sicuro che hai detto tutta la verità? Certo. Non sono convinti, guarda, si vede in faccia proprio. What do you think those two are cooking up? Where's the fire, Polly? Sir, I've got Mary Brogan and her mother in DVU. Mary wants to withdraw her statement. Well, don't let her leave until I've had a word. She's very distressed, sir. Is she? So am I. Uh, no. Mr Baldoni, you'll be pleased to hear that Mary Brogan has withdrawn her allegations against you. Just like that? Yes. You keep me here all this time? She changed her mind? And now everything is all right? Yeah, well, if you're not happy, you're free to make a complaint. Madai! Uh, of course, there is the question of the drugs we found in your room. You see, ecstasy is still a category A substance. I'm sorry. I really cannot hang around anymore. I am due the consult in ten minutes. Sandro, if you need further assistance, give this man a call. It's a personal friend of mine. I am sure he will oblige. Mother. Mr. Ains. Then again, if we can prove that you've been drug dealing, you can still end up doing a long stretch. Really? In that case, io me ne frego. I had enough of this place, I had enough of you, and I had enough of this stupid country. Mm. Well, Bob, keep hold of him for a bit for me, will you? Yeah, of course. Has he ever hit you, Mary? I mean, really hit you? 
Yes. But I had lied to him, hadn't I? Show me where he hit you. Look, neither of you have to put up with this. Now, if you want, I can refer you to the Domestic Violence Unit. They can find you a temporary refuge, and if necessary, take out an injunction against your husband. It's up to you. I don't know. It seems a bit drastic. But think about Mary. You don't want her to go through what you've suffered all these years, do you? We can sort all this out right now. But we need your say-so. Polly. <laughs> Mary Brogan? Yes? I'm Detective Inspector Harry Haynes. I was in charge of the investigation into your alleged rape. I'm sorry. I didn't realise all this would happen. What did you think would happen? We have all these procedures here designed to protect women, and you have just abused every single one of them. I was going to say something sooner, but... But you didn't. Instead, I've wasted valuable police time interviewing an innocent man waiting for you to decide whether or not to come clean. Sir. Yes? Can I have a word? I think she's been through enough without us putting more pressure on her. The father's been knocking them both around by the sounds of it. I'm trying to sway them round to the DVU. Well, let me know how you go. Now, have you thought any more about what I said? Uh, yeah. Uh, we want to go through with it. That's very brotherly of you to gamble a thousand pounds on little Sandro's bail. He doesn't know he has to come back in a month, doesn't he? I'll make sure he does. How do you mean gamble? Well, he could disappear off the face of the earth. Stranger things have happened. I mean, sorry, is this some kind of English joke? What? Well, something like that. No, I was just wondering how far you go to help your brother out, that's all. I'd do everything I can, I told you then. Well, even if he decided to let you down to the tune of, say, thousand pounds? Oh, I see, you think my brother's going to run off. Is that it? Uh, well, I don't think there's uh, much chance of that happening, Mr Haynes. Well, you've more faith than I have. It's uh, not faith that I've got, Mr. Haynes. It's this. See you in one month. There was the time when I was washing my hair and he came at me from behind and held my head under the water. And, well, I still don't know what I'm supposed to have done wrong. I think you've given us more than enough, Mrs. Brogan. You wouldn't think it to look at him, would you? Happy-go-lucky Johnny, the neighbours call him. Always got a smile. Aren't I lucky to have such a wonderful husband? They don't know the half of it. 